All right, so welcome everyone to the American Innovator. This is going to be a crazy time because we have so many people here today for our round table. And today's question, we're just going to cut right to it. We're not going to waste any time is how engaged, how deeply engaged is your team members with Lean and how do you know? And so the ground rules are simple. It's 60 seconds per person, no more than that. We wanna bounce it back and forth. And Ashley, you're on the top of my screen. So how deeply engaged are your people after a year and a half of doing Lean? Um, they are well engaged. Um, on a scale of one to 10, I would say a four. It's high, it is high engagement compared to what we've had. Um, but in terms of what I've seen of other companies like yourselves and Michael's, I'd say about a four. Um, there's different levels, so I could pick Michelle at you know, maybe an eight and Dale maybe an eight, but most of them average around a four. The way I tell people are engaged or not is if people are pulling information from me. Okay. So rather than me trying to push information wow. to them, then if it's in a morning meeting, what I used to do, people are stepping back in a morning meeting and not engaging, I would be trying to pull them in. Now I'm using it as a way to see who I need to spend my time and efforts with um, to engage more so it's whether they uh, I spoke to you before do they get it but um, have trouble implementing it or do they just not get it <coughs> I love what you so, said they're pulling so information from you that's yeah. how you if measure if I've got it. to tell that person the whole time constantly and push at them then you know that's my way yes. of knowing if they're engaged that's good well there's going to be a follow up question so Ron what do you think you're on front and center on the screen <coughs> how well, engaged I are mean, you people I think they're very engaged. Um, I don't know, on a scale of one to 10, I, I hesitate to throw a number out, but I would say, um, I don't know, six or seven. And mm -hmm. I think that the way that, that I can tell is um, the, uh, the look on their faces and I can hear it in their voices. You know, are they, are they committed to our purpose or to our cause, uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do? We're trying to teach people about lean. Right. Meanwhile, we're practicing it ourselves. <laughs> and it's, you know, sometimes it's difficult, right? It's like the, uh, the guy who has the air conditioning business without air conditioning in his house, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not right. perfect. By, 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 no, by no means are we perfect. But, um, um, you know, I, I, Richard Sheridan has taught me about joy and about how people are engaged and they're happy and they're, uh, they have an, uh, intrinsic motivation. And that's how I can tell people are engaged because lean to me is far more about people than it is about tools or techniques or anything like that. So what's the attitude? Are they happy? Mm -hmm. Are they, are they, uh, do they want to be working for a Gemba Academy? Yeah. What I like about that, Ron, is what you left the conversation with the last round table. You said it's all about respect for people. And so Ashley says he gauges it by how much they're pulling information. You say you gauge it by how happy they are and engaged in the process, how much joy they have. I like it. That's very cool. It's a very honest assessment. Bruce, go ahead. It's all yours. Hi, Paul. I would say uh, I work with several clients, but the primary client client I am working with today, I would say 50% engagement. They have about 120 employees, and I my barometer is probably about half of those, about 60 employees, um, have uh, brought terrific wonderful improvement ideas uh, ideas that are percolating from the grass or from the from the grassroots or from the ground floor and and that's kind of my barometer um, I have the same sentiment as Ron that I think that joy in the workplace is another strong barometer of engagement and uh, this is a, a place where I would say I uh, probably was uh, one or two folks out of a hundred when I started and it's probably up to about 50% of the workforce. That have joy and that you feel like are really more engaged in the work they have to do on an emotional level than they were prior to learning lean. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Just like a previous call you had when I said it has to be fun. It just doesn't work uh, if it's fun. And, and, and like Ron said, he used the word joy. But if you're having fun, uh, you're going to feel like you own your uh, your, your work area and you'll uh, feel autonomy and be excited to come into work. So just for the sake of repeating this, Ashley, powerful concept. They're pulling information from you. Ron, they have joy. They're, they're engaged emotionally. Bruce, you said something very interesting though. You said when you see ideas percolating up from the shop floor, that's a really a measuring stick for you as well, as well as the joy and emotional. But I think that was a powerful concept. Is that correct? Would I hear that correctly? Yeah. Exactly. I'm more excited about the $100 uh, idea than the senior manager in a boardroom coming up with some, um, you know, um, 
game changer. And and that's when you really have uh, traction when everyone in the company is coming up with a uh, a better way to um, to do a simple I task. I love it. I love it. So this is really good. Pulling information, joy, mm -hmm. and people coming up with simple ideas from the shop floor up, as opposed to leadership putting an edict down. Lauren, go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm. I thought about this over the past couple of days, and I had the same thing too. And my notes reflect that. Uh, um, I think we're about 50% engaged. Um, I think 90% of the people here know the definitions of a lot of the things we talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but to actually truly know the meaning, I think we're less than 50%. Um, and uh, I think there's a recurring lack of interest um, in, about how deep the well goes. Um, I think, you know, again, definitions are one thing. What are the actual meanings? What does it mean to practice these um, disciplines? Um, so for what, example, what, so what level of people? You said fifty percent. You thought? Y yep. Okay. Um, I, I, as an example, and this is a uh, uh, Greg asks a worker while she walks by, "What's the defin definition of kaizen?" And she turns and said, "It's a type of foam." Ah. You know, so we, there's a. You know, so there's, we have we have the uh, the, the full range. One for Paul. Oh my gosh! You're right. killing Sorry, me, Sorry, You're killing yeah, me. So we have the full range of people who you know. That's not the that's not the norm around here. But you know, th there is a common denominator. There's there's, there's the, the newest the newest person who is learning these things, and then there's the people who are so incredibly engaged they have dreams at night about it. So yeah. Um, and so what level? So here's the question, Lauren. What yeah. level would you guess people are dreaming about? at night? 10%. 10%. Okay. 50%, it's pretty, they pretty much get it, but 10% are dreaming. So that means you and Greg are the dreamers, right? <laughs> and a couple other people. And a couple yeah. other people. Well, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> well, I, I, I accept that. That's perfectly fine. Michael, go ahead. Well, um, it was hard to tell um, how deeply engaged my team is. So guess what? I just asked them. That yeah. was the best one. And, Good job. Um, I just reverse the question and, and ask them, so how, how engaged is the team? So I've asked them uh, personally, how engaged are you and how engaged are the team? And it was interesting, they, from themselves, they think they are at 50% around this from one to 100. And the entire team they see at 70%. Um, okay, how can I know or how do I know? It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, um, besides the fact that we are an awesome team with no Chinese whispers and stuff uh, yeah. anymore, um, we grew 44% with the same amount of people last year with less hours, less stress, and, and way much more laughing. Um, I mean, you know, Yellow Tools and, and all the guys who w went here once, you know, you, you hear them laughing all the time, but we're way much more productive than ever. Um, but it's funny that they see themselves at a 50% and the entire team at 70%. That is fascinating. Pers wow. That's it's, a good, it's, it's very smart that you asked that question that way because I asked the question too, Michael, but I didn't ask the second part, which you said, how do you view the entire team? That was brilliant. So 50% they view themselves and 70% they view the team and you measure it by the fact that your productivity, there's empirical data that suggests, hey, lean is definitely uh, happening here. And we got a we had a nice discussion this morning at the morning meeting regarding this, and um, and I asked them, what is your benefit of being in a team company? And and one girl she said, well, keep it this way, I get the same amount of money if I work for, you know, the daily shit, and I can't can't get rid of it, or I get the same money for it in a, in a, in, a, in an environment where I can change it for for the good every day. So I'm so proud to be okay. Uh, Okay, a member of a of a kaizen. So wow. So there's the quote. There is the quote for the whole round table. I get the same yeah. amount. Of, I get, do the same amount of effort and get the daily shit, or I work and and actually do lean and I get all the benefits from it. Well, I should. I think we should not forget that they still go work for the money of course I mean right. improving life and everything we are leaders so we, we, de we see the whole thing from a different perspective and they just just work for the money but they have a choice working at a company where you know they, they fight and, and, and do that, that crap every day mm -hmm. or 
working at the same at another company where you know where there is that atmosphere where you can improve it, you can you can build your workspace how you want and 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 the boss or the system the establishment gives you the freedom every day 30 minutes a day to improve what what mm. what bucks you i love it and and this is this is what they said this morning so i just uh, awesome well done michael i love it joe how about you joe's joining us and taking glenn's place joe is uh, glenn bostick's right hand man and also joe you're going to japan with us is that correct that's right very that's excited a, about yeah, that and we're excited to have you on the round table so go ahead how, what level of engagement do you think? Because you guys are killing it, man. I watch everything you're doing on Facebook. I am blown. Look at Joe. I'm blown away by what Snapcat is doing. Blown <laughs> away. Go ahead. Well, I appreciate I appreciate it, and it's a you know it's a give and take we share with each other, and that's what helps us be successful. But I'd say I think we're really well engaged right now. I'd say we're about a seven or an eight, mm. um, and and I think you know some of the ways I can see it, or I can, I know it is because I can see it. I can see it on my shop floor. I can see it in their faces. I can hear it. They're talking about it. Um, they look at lean, the improvement times that we do, the 30 minutes a day. That, that's as important as production to them, and it is to us too. Um, the quality is going up. Uh, when I say I can see it, I mean these little – every single day we're doing these uh, – we're handing out these tickets every day. So we have these – when they put an issue up on the Gemma board, we hand them a ticket. So we're trying to tie a game into it. So now they're mm, – nice. you know, last – Last month alone, 637 issues, uh, opportunities on the boards, and uh, it's fun because they get to spin the prize wheel, you know, but it's not all about fun. It's about highlighting these opportunities, getting it done, and like I said, I can see it. They're really engaged. They're asking for ideas. They're sharing ideas with each other, and it, it's just the topic of discussion, and it seems like production and quality comes. You know, our focus is on lean and everything else just is a result of lean. So um, the difference that I, I believe the difference is the employee involvement. So before, as you know, I heard push and pull mentioned before, mm -hmm. it's not a push system before. Yeah. Before it was managers learning about lean and then pushing it down into the shop. Now it's, we're, we're teachers now and you know, we're all learning lean together. So what it is, is it's the employee involvement. It's giving them the time, understanding that these guys are my experts. They're the guys on the floor doing this day in and day out. So my, what I can do for them is give them the opportunity, and they just run with it. That's the difference. It's a pull system. It's not a push system anymore. Joe, I really high five, believe. man. Amazing. Wow. Thank you. That is so <laughs> killer. Nick, what do you think? I think there's a direct correlation between how engaged each employee is, um, with how much how much uh, time that we have spent teaching and training them and helping them understand you know uh, or gain a deeper understanding of lean because you know we have a lot of people so like I I can't really just you know put a a score out of you know one to ten on how engaged I think our employees are because I think there's a bunch of different levels of engagement and I think it's directly related to how much time we've spent with each individual and how much they've been involved in you know actual problem solving and, and, you know, making improvements in their own processes. And so, you know, I think the people that we spent more time teaching and training and the, and the more time we spent with them, you know, in the, the problem solving exercise and removing the struggles, they are definitely more engaged. So I, I kind of see it at different levels and I, I think it's all dependent in a direct correlation with how much time you're spending with them. You know, teaching I, and I think training. it's a phenomenal answer, Nick. And, and for everyone listening on, Nick has the hardest job here. Nick's dealing with 900 people. The rest of us are not. We're much smaller organizations. And so implementing lean at Walters and Wolf is an entirely different animal, frankly, in my opinion, than implementing at FastCap, which is a piece of cake and a walk in the park. When people call me up and say, I ask them how big is their company, they say 15 people, I go, paradise. You have the easiest job in the world. And they're looking at me like, this is impossible. I got 15 people I got to turn. Well, imagine what it would be like to have 900 people to teach and train. That's a different ball game. And I know, Bruce, you could tell a quick story real quick about what that was like because at Hagemeyer, they had thousands. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, Paul. There was 2,000 employees and we generated 2,500 ideas in the first year. So uh, I went through the same challenge and uh, it's more difficult, but you can do it. You can do it. You got to be committed to it. They, they, at Hagemeyer, they invested the resources to make that happen mm. and invested millions of dollars. Is that correct? Or 
Yeah, they invested one million dollars, and it returned twelve million in the first year, and that was the CFO's numbers, not mine. Yeah, isn't that that's really good when they tell you that engagement? I'm going to say seventy percent. I think people are pretty engaged in the practices mm -hmm. without having to be pulled. Um, in terms of eating it, sleeping it, and dreaming it, and really, you know, deeply diving in on their own, I'm going to say five percent. Um, and you know, I've given out many of these books, and they just kind of, you know, they just they don't mm -hmm. people don't study the books. So, um, but I think if we create strong visual tools that tell us, tell everybody, including me, what's the one thing I have to do today? Um, then it gives them clarity and simplicity, and then they can work on one project at a time. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're working on is creating, and we're using a great tool called Trello, which I think LJ would agree is phenomenal. He's the guy who's spearheading that. But we just can tell right on the board what's the one project that you're working on. We don't need to, I don't need to come and say, hey, Paul, what are you working on today? Because that feels like you're hounding him. I, I mean, when see. It's, when so it's, you have when a, visual, pictures up on the, a visual project yeah. improvement board. Right, and we've kind of backed off. I backed off to say, look, there's two buckets. One, ideas for improvements. Put them in that bucket. Don't, you know, we get tons of them in the bucket, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and, then, and then there's the, what improvement are you working on? What have we chosen after we did a Kaizen together? Which one of your five ideas do you think we, we want to pursue that, that, that is, you know, meritorious, you know? And it's like, okay, fine. Well, then let's, let's do that and deeply learn to solve those problems one at a time. And that's probably the greatest change that I think um, externally will help us internalize the way we think. The way you measure that then is you've created an actual process for measuring it, i.e. your improvement board which visually allows you to see the level of engagement instead of you hounding people did I get that right yeah I mean you, you asked me the question how deeply engaged is your team and I was uh, thinking about it so what if 20 uh, 80 percent of the improvements of your team uh, of, of your company is made by 20 percent of your team and I thought yeah. about that. Engaged. I mean, they all engaged. They all believe in it. They all, you know, repeat the word lean and kaizen on and on and on again. But then, if if, if you see them working, they still use two pens instead of one and looking for two. You know what I mean? So right. the little things are not there. So I I had to ask myself the question: Is it really true that eighty percent of the improvements which were made? Uh, was based on 20% of the brains and, and the action of, of my team. And I fear that this is true. People learn to see waste, right, Paul? Mm -hmm. See waste. They do it, That yes. is number one. They got to see it, right? You've said this countless times. And if we can get the people who aren't the you know, crackerjack problem solvers, executors, good old farm boys who can do anything with bailing, you know, wire and tape, right. right? If you just say, just identify something that frustrates you, because if it's frustrating you, I assure you there's a waste. Right? Okay, so let me let me interject and then, there. And then me, put it in the board. Go ahead. Right. So I think that you said something interesting there, and I think it ties into what Michael said, and that was that if 20% of the people are doing 80% of the improvements was Michael's hypothesis. And then Greg, you said there's the good old boys that can take chewing gum and bailing wire and fix any problem. There is a group of people that have a propensity to be able to solve problems organically because it's who they are. And the right. rest of the people are not as predisposed to that. I think the question is how do we take that 80% and teach them how to use bailing wire and chewing gum. No, we don't have to, Paul. Okay, we have to, to just we just have to teach them to work together. Yes. Oh, okay. Go you ahead. know that's it. That, that's, that's all. That's all. That's you, explain, that's all Michael. You need. Explain. I mean, it's it's you know kaizen or lean whatever. It's just all about networking. Okay, seeing the waste is one thing, and my people see the waste all the time, but they they think okay, I can fix it tomorrow, or it doesn't bug me that much that I fix it right now, or like. Greg said, I don't know how to fix it, so I, keep, I shut my mouth. So the only thing is we have to, and this is what we do in a morning meeting every, every, every day. So put it on, put it in the middle, put it, the bucket in the middle and, and, and talk about your problem and then ask for help. And these yeah. guys, the good old boys, they will help you fixing it, yes. but you, okay. you have to ask them. So you, you so let me, let them. me you repeat, to let me together. repeat to what you said, Michael. So essentially you said, we don't, have to, we don't have to teach the 80% 
to use no. chewing gum and bailing wire, no. but we need to no. be able to have, teach them to ask the people who are predisposed to that Correct. to help them Correct. make the improvements. Okay, Ron, what are your Correct. thoughts? Well, what, what something that struck me, and I think it was Michael that said it, said earlier that people were working for the money. Is that right, Michael? I don't want to put words in your yes. mouth. Is that? Yes, yes, yes. So I would challenge you, uh, and I, your culture may be slightly different, so you know, I apologize if I get it wrong, but I personally believe that, sure, everybody needs to make money to you know, take care of their families, but ultimately, it's in, that's, an in, that's an extrinsic motivator. I believe that people are driven by intrinsic motivation um, more than they are extrinsic motivation. So autonomy, mastery, purpose, these things, I think that's really what a, a truly is driving probably your workforce. Um, that's my two cents just on something ahead, that you said ahead, earlier. Michael. Okay, I totally I totally with you. I'm totally with you and 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 I am I'm, I'm I'm convinced that money is the worst motivator at all, but these are the words of my people. Don't forget that. I've asked them and they t they came up with the money thing and they said I'm proud to get the same amount of money in that amazing company than I would get in another country company well and I have to 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 yeah. deal with my shit every day. You know what I mean? But so I, well, money money is their barometer. It's still their barometer. It will be their barometer f f every time. So we have to deal with it sort of. But I'm with you totally with you, sir. Ron, go ahead real quick and then we want to go right to LJ. We want to switch this up. Go ahead. Well, my question is for you, Paul, because you've skipped, man. You haven't even talked about Fast Cap. So okay. what about you? Well, I, I, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll do mine really quick, and then LJ, you're next, and then Nick, you're right after that, so get ready. So I did the same thing Michael did. I actually took my iPhone. I was curious because I didn't know. I thought my opinion was I had... 50% of my people raving maniacs about lean. And then I had the rest of the 50% were, you know, somewhere out and, you know, they were all doing it because everyone's been in my place. They're all doing it and they're all, it's all really incredible. So I took the video camera and I walked around and I asked every one of them on a scale of one to 10, how much do you live and think about breathe? Not just a fast cap, but when you go home. And 95% of them, I have the videotape and I'm going to post it as a link to this 95% of them said an 8 or a 9 or a 10 or some of them said a 50 or a 100 they said they think about it all the time they think about it at home what they do I was a little shocked okay I'm gonna ask everybody in our company right now a question how deeply are they engaged in lean? How much do they believe in lean? Here we go. Uh, lean has worked really well for me and personally at home. You always think about better ways to make things easier. Faster. On a scale of one to 10, how, how deeply engaged are you in lean? How much do you believe in lean? Eight. 10 being the type. An eight. eight. Okay, good. Nine. Uh, 10, absolutely. A, a 10, yeah. okay. Andrea, what do you think? Same. Same, a 10. Yeah. Wow, she's my daughter too. That's amazing. Eight or nine, <laughs> An eight or nine, okay. Um, ten. A ten. I was blown away when I. Oh, you're blown away. Lean. Cool, Vlad. What about you? you? What? Twenty. Yeah. Vlad. Yeah. So, oh, there I'm gonna go ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. I'm believing ten. A ten. Wow, that's incredible, Ed. What do you think? I believe in all about lean because it's all about progress, improvements, and it moves the world. Forward. So, what do you think? On a scale so of one to ten. One to ten. I'll take it above ten, and I'll go twenty. Holy mackerel! Wow. It's crazy. I didn't expect this. Yes. Heather, Rhonda, I have a question for you. Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how deeply do you believe in lean? You know, how much do you believe in what we're trying to do here? 100%. 100%? Yeah. 1 to 10, so 100, so 10. Yeah. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I, I, I do too. Really? Yeah. No hesitation? No. No. Wow. It's a good thing. That's crazy. Yeah, but it's a good thing, Heather, but is it something that you're like, man, this is incredible. I'm doing this 24-7. I'm thinking about it all the time. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. buying a labeler oh, yeah. for my house. Oh, yeah, awesome. I'm doing it. Okay, <laughs> good, good, good. I can't I can't argue with that. That's good. Ten. A ten? Wow. Crazy what you do. Eleven. Ten. It's Eleven. ruined me. Whoa. Ruined Whoa, me. Whoa, you guys are, <laughs> wow. And definitely, since I've worked here, it's definitely, like, infiltrated other lots of other parts of my life like at home and stuff like that so, so scale one to ten what would you say uh, how much are you thinking about it obsessed with it uh i say i'm in the nine-ish area yeah good awesome cool how deeply do you believe in lean and you think about it and kind of obsess about it all day all the time i mean i think it's a i think it's a ten for sure awesome thank you i'd say nine and not that much already you've only been here a yeah. couple of weeks 
I, I've been here four weeks. Four weeks. Four okay. Weeks. And so you really think about it all the time? You go home and talk to your husband about it? Yes. Really? And he's in his shop and he's doing the same thing. So <sighs> Crazy. We watch your videos and we re are reading your book. So. Wow, you're killing me. I can't even believe that. That's great, Darla. Awesome. Alicia, from four wow. weeks to uh, 10 years, how long have you been here? <laughs> 10 years. My Wow, I, and that was a guess. I pulled that. I, I pulled that like out of nowhere, man. One to ten. Yeah, one to ten. Yeah. Probably, I would say a nine. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You guys, I got a question for all three of you, and don't let the yes. other person influence you. Okay. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you guys obsess and think about lean in your life? On a scale of one to ten. Eight. Eight or nine off the bat, but once you go into 8 .2. real lean. Eight point two. Eight. Eight or, eight nine. or what nine. Okay, awesome. Thanks, you and guys. I, hey, I catch myself doing it at home all the time. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Annie, your whole life, you want to think about everything. You know, like when you're home, when you're hunting, whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say a nine. A nine? A nine, I would say so. Why? Why so high? Well, ever since working here, you know, it's like you spend the majority of your week here and the majority of your life here, which is awesome. And um, all the principles that we learn, it's just like so embedded in our brain. And it's gone so much further though than here. It's also at home and what I do and like how I like approach people and how I just deal with any situation. I'm like, that's not very lean and people don't understand. <laughs> yeah, where you're coming from. Mm -hmm, they don't get it, but um, it's definitely, a really really cool experience and it's been an awesome experience and it's been such a learning I've learned so much awesome thanks Annie I guess to be honest eight I mean I've noticed a difference at home that too. high that's good yeah I've noticed a difference at home um, like I have a closet that's just, or I had a closet that's just like stuffed with a whole bunch of yeah, stuff yeah like, yeah I, mean, I have that closet too <laughs> yeah, I have the moved same thing together we have a bunch of stuff and it's just like one day I was like, okay, I'm gonna slowly go through it wow. and organize some clothes it? and stuff. And maybe I don't know, it's eight too high. <laughs> no, eight's not too high. No, awesome. Thanks, Kristen. Okay, so here's the question, and I want you to just answer it spontaneous off the top of your head. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you think about lean? How much is lean like a part of not just here, but at home, everything you do and everything yes. you're, you're thinking about. Ready, everyone, for the answer? Don't let anybody else influence you. Tim. 10. 10? 50. 50? One, of, is that a one, one out of 10? One, one to 10. One to 10, so you say 50. Oh, well, five. I thought you went out one to 100. I'm okay, sorry. okay, one, one. Between one and 10. Yeah, five. Five. That's five. five. Five, okay. Definitely sorry. a 10, constantly. Okay. 10, I live with Paul. <laughs> <laughs> My eight. wife, yeah, there you go. Eight. Eight, okay, good, thank you. Did you guys get the question? Yes. You guys are doing three S's in here, cleaning up. That's awesome. Okay, Shelly, on a scale of one to ten, how much do you think about lead? Not just here, just in your whole life. It's funny. I was thinking about it this morning. When I was brushing my teeth, I was taking off my slippers at the same time. I'm like, so I have to say nine. I have to say nine. Okay. I think about Jane. it a lot. Okay. Honestly, I'm probably about a four. Okay. No problem. Yeah. That's good. It's so all. Oh, we want an honest answer. We want an honest answer. Six or seven. Six or seven. Yeah. Fair answer. Good. Stores and mother, daughter, okay? <laughs> so the mother hasn't quite infiltrated the daughter yet completely. I just had a conversation with my sister about how how lean could be implemented in homeschooling and uh, wow. housework. Wow, awesome. Was, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. I'd think? say about an eight, too. I okay. just printed out signs for my house for cleaning the bathroom. Actually. No just, way. Yeah, because I'm awesome. getting a little... Awesome. <laughs> awesome. You could extrapolate because I was asking them on video camera. They gave me a different answer. But I, I got some honest answer. I got a couple of people saying four and five and, and stuff like that. But, How I measure it is whether or not I measure it in the same way that Ron measures it. If I walk into my facility, I can feel the vibe in the air. I can literally, it's, it's palpable. I can feel it whether or not people yeah. are happy here. And the mm -hmm. minute I feel they're not happy, I know that lean is not working because lean makes you happy. Lauren yeah. said it last right. time. It yep. gave, Lauren, what were your words about what does lean do? I was responding to um, Mark, I think it was, in his video. And his video made me feel good because feel, lean feels good when you're doing it. Lean makes it you feels feel good. good, period. That's it. Lean That's it. makes you feel yeah. good. I don't care what anybody says. It should make you feel good. Right. As about engagement and people is what happens when you're not there? I think that when I'm not here is 
you know, as the owner of the company, and you're pushing it, and you're the, you know, you're the main cheerleader of your own company. But when you're not there, what happens, and how much does it progress? How much do you have to keep well, coming back and boosting it? Up? If I'm not on the factory floor for a couple of days, how much does that level come down? Yeah, how much me, does it go me up? and Joe know about that. <laughs> well, yep. my answer to that is, it used to be a disaster at my company. And now it appears that when I go away, it gets better because they they want to please me and they want to work hard and show me all yeah. the cool things they've done in my app. So that's my Joe. Go ahead. Yeah. So I was just going to say I actually removed myself from the Gemma walks, the daily meetings for a little while, just to kind of get a sense of this. So um, I let my shop foreman, you know, take the char take charge and kind of run those meetings just to get an idea and kind of gauge you know where what kind of improvements were we getting on the boards were they still doing their daily improvements um, were we handing out tickets were we having fun and the result was yeah I could see it I could see new things when I went out there physically go and see them I could they're talking about new projects they're talking about the good things that they've done and the ideas they have to continue it and um, again that you know I could see it because the tickets were handing out you know for every improvement so Very I mean cool. it it was cool yeah and that's probably a good indicator, Joe, of the maturity of your lean culture. Yeah, and I'm not saying we're perfect because we have a lot of room to grow. Are trust you me. But the, I'm embarrassed yeah, exactly. all the time. Continuous improvement. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But the, but it was it was good. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly weigh in on the conversation about money and motivation that Michael and Ron were speaking about. Um, Probably, if, if lean's my number one passion, uh, human behavior is number two. And I've read all the books. Ron, I, it sounds like you're um, ascribed to that uh, Daniel Pink's uh, drive about workplace motivation. And I've read that book front to back, and I agree with that ex, uh, intrinsic motivation, the, the desire to be autonomous, to feel good about coming to work, have a higher purpose is, is the number one driver. But it's the number one driver when you're fairly paid. And they say that money is a motivator uh, when you're not fairly paid. So if if you're whether you're a machinist or a pipe fitter or whatever you do, if you're in the bottom quartile of pay, it probably is a motivator. And uh, yeah. once you feel that you are being treated, fairness is another. There's lots of behavioral studies on just the concept of being, treat, being treated fairly. And uh, so I think the most powerful motivator is is uh, leadership. And I've been to Paul's factory, and I I I know I knew instantly that if I wanted to do well there lean would have to matter it's just simply when it comes from the ceo when they're as passionate as paul it's just a you you could not work at fast cap if you didn't give a rat's ass about lean and, mm -hmm. and continuously getting better but if paul was in the bottom quartile of pay i would bet uh that money would be a motivator That's uh, my I, I, I would agree with you completely i think uh, yeah. richard branson said it better than anybody else you need to train people so well that they could go anywhere and get a job but you need to yeah. pay them so well that they won't. Yeah. yeah. There's two sides to that coin, and it's, 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 to me, it's one of these things. And I've said to the guys who are at the higher end of the tradesman category, it's like one-on-one, -on -one, these conversations are happening organically. I said, here's the deal. I need lean leaders everywhere. And if you want another nickel out of this company, I don't care how much better art you are at making widgets as a craftsman, but I need Perfect. to see you deepening your understanding of this, reading the books that I've given out, and starting to really become that. That's what I value. Greg, perfect answer. I love it. That's the way I feel too. Okay, let me please clarify my my phrase regarding money and motivating. Uh, it's not that they said it's 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 that they want to have more money. No, um, it happens last year that two girls start working for Yellow Tools for less money than they used to get at the other com a company, and they swept, uh, sk uh, skipped over from that company. So they heard about us. They heard about the way. We, we work mm -hmm. and they said we want to be a part of that team even if we have 50 cents an hour less than we used to have so lean is the better motivator than money but th this is what they said that, that you know so, well, I if, totally you have, if you have it. If you yeah. have a choice to work in a lean company, get for uh, for a thousand bucks, and a non-lean company working for a thousand bucks, I ever wanted to be at the at lean com a company even for less money. So that's I just want to clarify that that I'm not you know paying big bucks to <laughs> to to make them engaged. It's not. No, the I case. totally get it. So I th I think we're gonna wrap this up. Does anybody have any other last comments? But I'm gonna have Nick close out the thing by telling a quick story. But go ahead, Ashley. 
Um, yeah, I'm just gonna because you started with me, so I had to pick a number out. So I went at the no four. Problem. So I'm, having listened to other people, I'm gonna kind of re rehash that. What I'm gonna say is, my people are hun- are 100 percent engaged 40 percent of the time. That's my four out of ten. <laughs> so what, what I need to do is find out how I can get That's them perfect. the other sixty percent of the time actually doing what they should be doing and be engaged. Well, I don't know if I'm going to have Nick close it out because that was pretty good English humor. I don't know. I want to end on that on that high. <laughs> Nick, yeah, you, yeah. Have, I'm not going to be able to top that. You're not going to be able to top that, but I, I want you to because it's a serious story, and I, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. So, uh, Randy Wolf, who was the founder of Walters and Wolf, am I correct there, Nick? Yes. And I've met yeah. Randy. Randy's an amazing human being. And Nick, you told me one time about Randy's position on pay and how he takes care of his people. Am I putting you on the spot too much with that? Um, no, not, not yet. Go ahead. Tell, yet. Tell, me, tell me a little bit about what Randy said because Randy is a, is a remarkable <laughs> man and a remarkable leader and has built a remarkable company. And Nick has been his right-hand person for forever. How long have you been at Walters and Wolf? You started sweeping the floor, and you're president of the company. Is that right, yes, Nick? 30, yeah, thir- yes, yes. Um, thirty, almost thirty-seven years. It'll be thirty-seven years in uh, in July. So, thirty-seven uh, years. Yes. He sat there and learned from this amazing man. So, what did he tell you about pay? I want to end on that one because I think it was powerful. I have so many Randy Wilson stories. It's it's hard to. I'm I'm trying to remember the specific one that is one that I sh- I shared with you. Or it's not necessarily a story. It's just the fact, as I understood it, that Randy makes sure he takes care of his people financially, and oh, you, yeah. you have yeah. an extremely long term loyal workforce there. People, the people I've met have worked there for 20, 30 years, like yourself, 37 years. And, and I think that's reflective of Randy's belief in taking care of people. Yeah, but I, I, I don't believe the longevity comes, you know, solely, actually, I, would, I wouldn't say it comes from the compensation. I mean, Randy definitely wants all of his people to be, you know, economically successful. And right. we, definitely, we definitely pay on the, you know, whatever, if there's a, a range of what people for their positions are appropriately paid, you know, we try to pay on the high end of that wage. There you go. Uh, how, however, the uh, you know, you know, we're all we all are involved in market swings, and you have the economy. You know, the economy is you know like waves, right? You have these great economies when everybody is really busy and and everybody is really successful, and and during those periods, that's really that's really the gauge of how you're treating your people and how respectfully you're treating your people because. Anybody during a flush market can go get a substantial raise working for a competitor who's shorthanded. And so it's, you know, and it's not like we raise our salaries when the market goes up and then bring it back down. So, I mean, we appropriately pay people, try to try to pay on the high side. Uh, Randy has an extremely generous, you know, uh, call it a success sharing program where it's directly related to how well the company does is you know there's extra compensation for everyone but like i said anyone can go get a raise especially anyone that's been trained here during a uh, you know during a great market but it's um, you know it's how i think i know ron you were saying if you don't believe it's the money at all it's the you know it's how you treat your people and i think it is i think if you treat your people with respect i think lean is all about treating your people with respect and if you do that you know, your people are going to stay with you, you know, even though if they have the opportunities to go increase their compensation somewhere else. Um, Michael, like what you were saying, they'd rather work for someone for a little less. And I, I think with Lean, they have a little bit more long-term view on, uh, you know, on their careers. I don't have the answer. I only know that I think the respect component is the most important component, but I think right behind it and equally as important is we need to take care of our people. That's my opinion. Whether or not I'm right or not, I have no idea. Uh, You guys were awesome, and hopefully we added some value. I know I learned a whole bunch. I love all the different ways that you guys are evaluating engagement. I think I'm going to be able to measure at my own company more successfully and hopefully be improved as a result of the conversation. So thanks for joining us, you guys. You're welcome. Thank you. And and I might say that you guys were relatively well behaved. (laughs) (laughs) It was a we little, want to please right. you, Paul. We, we got a little out of hand before the before the recording got started, but but, but you guys did well. <laughs> Ashley, go ahead. Yeah, I'll say a quick question. If 
if you could a person to one to another company, like you know, Greg, if you could send one guy to Paul's place, or Mike, I could send one to Michael's. Would you pick the one guy that you knew he was really good, he had the capability, but he just wasn't engaged? Would you send him so he could open his eyes and try and trip his wire, or would you send the guy that is fully engaged so that he could become a better leader to teach the other guy? That's a great yeah, that's question. Both. That's, that's something send I've been thinking about. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Yeah, we've hey, changed one. Yeah. Would you buy? Oh, no, no, no. But you so, can only choose one yeah. or the other, I think, is the question. Yeah. No, yeah, I've struggled oh, with that. Okay, thinking, you know what, you guys? I was I'm thinking gonna, of I'm having gonna, a... I'm going to be uh, hardcore here. We're going to add... That's the question for next time. Uh -huh. That is a powerful <laughs> question for next nice. time. Nice. Okay? Thank you. You guys have a great day. You're all awesome.